Okay, let's first take a look at the active loop because it is extremely confusing. Let's say I want to put a loop over here, make a full beat loop over here, and I click on memory because I want to make it an active loop. And this loop, it works, like you can see over here, okay. But when I go back into the song and I play the song, it doesn't do anything. Okay, what is the problem here? Now I have disabled the loop because orange means disabled. When I want to enable it, I have to make it red. So I click on that icon. Pioneer chose a color that is extremely close to the other color. So one color, orange, which is very close to red, is disabled and red is enabled. I constantly confuse the two. The really easy solution is to make it blue when it is selected like they did with all the buttons over here. This is the hot cue, this is selected, this is not. When I click on it, it is selected, but it still doesn't work. So what's the problem? Well, I have to enable it again, but, but somewhere else in the software. Over here, click on this menu, active loop, and I have to set it to on. Now let's go back into the song. Is it now enabled or disabled? Well, it's enabled, it's enabled. But it's super confusing because I can imagine when you play a gig and you don't know for sure what you selected in Recordbox and you rely on that active loop during your gig and it doesn't engage, you have a problem. Let's talk about dynamically analyzing a track. Sometimes Recordbox analyzes a track wrong or the tempo of the track changes throughout the song. You won't get there with the standard analyzing method. So there is another method of analyzing a track, dynamically analyzing a track. Okay, um, how do I do that? Uh, uh, okay, let's click on the right here. Analyze it? No, because then it analyzes the track statically. Okay, yeah, I don't know that. There is no indication that it does that. Uh, let's let's take a track here. Here, analyze track. No, 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 no. Analyze lock. No, no, no. Uh, add to play. No, no, no. It's not here. No. Do you know where it is? Well. Uh, is this menu over here. Click on that and then you can analyze the track normal or dynamic. Why isn't it available in normal places? Let's talk about hot cues and cue points because hot cues and cue points are on the right of the screen over here. Now when I want to place a cue point for example over here I click memory and I get a memory cue over here. Okay I give it a name, press enter and I have given the cue point a name. Okay, now let's uh, place a uh, a hot cue over here. Let's cue it so it's on the beat. Now I click on hot cue. Okay, let's. Uh, whoa, whoopsie daisy! Wh uh, what 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 happened? I I I I clicked over here, but it jumps to that point. But why? Because when I click over here, that's the cue point that is meant to jump the hot cue. But why is it jumping when I'm clicking over here? Because I want to change the name. Maybe maybe double click it. No, 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 that doesn't work. But when I click on an empty slot, it doesn't jump. It sets the hot cue. But when I click on an existing hot cue, it jumps. But logically speaking, when I want to change a hot cue, for example, over here, I expect as a user to work in the same way. So what I would do as a user is set it here and then click over here. But no, it jumps. But that still hasn't solved the question, how do I set a name for a hot cue? Because you can set a name for a hot cue. Let's set a hot cue here. But when I want to change the name of this hot cue, I have to right click with my mouse on this cue point and say add comment. It's totally inconsistent and it makes no sense. The playlist palette. Uh, personally, I don't use it because I don't see much use for it. But okay, let's say you want to use it. The playlist palette is over here. You can have the tag list over here. And when you double click, no, no, you, you can't double click on that. Uh, no, no, you have to use this button. Makes sense, right? <laughs> okay, um, uh, now I can uh, add songs to my tag list. Uh, can be really useful. But sometimes, for example, um, this doesn't show. Why not? Well, there is a button over here <laughs> that enables or disables this part over here. But why isn't it 
always present, even if it's not showing over here. Why is this button over here and not over here, for example? Oh, and by the way, when you drag and drop a track to, for example, here, a new palette, instead of creating a shortcut to that track, for example, no, it creates a new playlist for you. <laughs> new playlisty. You can see it, cre it creates a whole new playlist. There are so many panels and menus in the software, but why? I talked about this menu over here. Why is it here? I can imagine that you want to export a track. Okay, but that exporting a track is also uh, here uh, and it's also over here. So it, it has no reason of being here. Why is there not a right menu click, for example, on a way on the waveform? Okay, now it reacts, but I, I can disable that, of course. And of course, in this menu, uh, click on the waveform off. Okay, but now there is no function assigned to the right mouse click on the waveform. But there is a menu over here. There is a menu over here. There is a menu on the right side. There is a menu on the left side. There is another menu here on the left side. Then, of course, the different modes. Then there is a toolbar over here. Then, of course, your your file menu. Why is there a track suggestion here? Uh, but also here. I can imagine for a beginner that so many menus and options and palettes etc in a screen can be quite overwhelming. And if it adds functionality, okay, maybe, but there is a lot of double functionality on different menus. Dragging and dropping tracks in playlists. Well, now you can't drag and drop tracks from your collection to a playlist because if you're in your collection and you want to add a track to your playlist you have to right mouse click that is annoying add to playlist over here that is super annoying in record box 6 you could select a couple of tracks and drag and drop it to a playlist well it is possible but it is so extremely hidden what you need to do is click on this tiny button over here that uh, again uh, yeah i don't know what that icon means then you have a sub browser and now you can have a collection over here and for example uh, have the your playlist over here so if you want to drag and drop your tracks from here to for example this playlist then you can do that but it is quite annoying and cumbersome and why are there two types of track filters uh, i have here a track filter uh, with which you can filter genre artist and album okay yeah that's nice but over here i have also a track filter <laughs> and with which you can filter on genre but yeah that doesn't work or is that also hidden behind the paywall and what does untitled column do <laughs> okay and why are there two panels for matching tracks or related tracks over here i have a section called related tracks uh, when i go to collection for example and i go here to the right i have also a panel section for related tracks i can set the settings of the matching tracks over here but i can also set it over here in my opinion this could have been consolidated in just one panel why do we need two the next one the track match feature you can record matches between two tracks that mix well together this way you can call these track matches on your cdj for example when you're playing one song that it suggests another song that in the past you recorded as a match really useful but where is this feature hidden because it is nowhere here on the export screen well therefore you need to go to the two player mode i'm not kidding i'm not kidding and now i can use the two players and in the second player i'm not sure if this is a match but let's assume it is over here in the right corner is the track match feature it is super hidden and why are there two kinds of sub browsers 
because over here we have a sub browser that's the horizontal variation but we also have a vertical sub browser that you can find over here it doesn't make the software easier and i don't see much of a use for the sub browser except for the dragging and dropping maybe but why are there two <laughs> Okay, the next one is rather funny. Let's start Recordbox. Okay, I need to install an update. Okay, let's start. Okay, let's go through the installer. Yeah. Okay, let's finish it. Version has been updated. Okay, uninstall Recordbox 7. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. And I know there is a typo in here somewhere, but that's not my fault. That's your fault. Okay, the next one took me literally years to figure out. Uh, let's go to the preferences screen. Okay, I have a couple of options here. Audio analysis, controller, remember that one? Controller, DVS, and extensions. Okay, okay. Now, let's uh, quit this dialog. Now let's go to the export mode. Now let's go to the settings screen. But this is a completely different screen. Remember? Uh, controller, uh, DVS, it's it's all gone now. There is a different options screen for the performance mode and the export mode. Which is really confusing because some of the options are different and if you know where to find a certain option, all of a sudden you can't find it in the options screen again. Where ha has it gone? As you might know, you can have two players in both the export mode and the performance mode. Okay, now let's go to the preferences screen. Let's go to keyboard shortcuts. And uh, here are the shortcuts. A uh, play uh, is space, uh, quantize is Q, timeout is T, uh, M. N now let's take a look at uh, the second player, player B. Um, those are the same shortcuts, but added to that is shift. So far so good. Sounds logic, right? But um, yeah, let's go to the performance mode. Let's click on preferences and let's click on keyboard. Then deck one, play pause is all of a sudden Z, uh, Q is A, return to the beginning of the track. Those are completely different shortcuts. And then you think, well, um, then the same logic applies to deck two just adding the shift to the Z makes it play pause, for example. Uh, no, let's uh, open deck two. That's, it is N and H. Okay, but what is the logic behind deck one and two? Well, they divided the keyboard in two parts. So the left part of the keyboard is deck one and the right part of the keyboard is deck two. Okay, makes sense, right? But why isn't that logic applied to the export mode as well? Now let's scroll down a little bit because here we can find the metronome volume. Okay, there is a shortcut for that. But switching the metronome on and off, there is no shortcut for that. Sure, you can add it, but it makes no sense that there is no shortcut for, for on and off, but there is a shortcut for the volume. And why is there a metronome in the performance mode in the first place? For the export mode and editing the beat grid, I understand. But this makes no sense. The next feature is also hidden. Uh, let's say I have a waveform over here and uh, I want to zoom in on this waveform. Where is the control for that? It is hidden behind this greater than sign. Well, What's the relationship between a greater than sign and zooming in and out? I don't get it. You can click on that and then there is a plus and a minus. And now I can zoom in and zoom out. And, and why does it sometimes take me two or three clicks to respond to that zooming in and out? Wouldn't it make more sense to move this panel to the top over here and it is displaying always so you can't hide it? So the users that are using the software for the first time have a really easy time navigating your software. And by the way, the fastest way to zoom in and out of your waveform is hovering over your waveform and use your mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out. 
I present to you the mystery of the disappearing waveform. I have here a track that is no loaded in normally and uh, it plays. I can scratch the track if I want to, uh, but where's the waveform? It took me a while to figure out, but <laughs> I found the solution. Uh, go to the performance mode. Then you have probably here enabled the show height mix point link panel. If I switch this panel off, and I go back to the export mode and I drag a track. Ta da! Here's the waveform. Now, I don't think it's fair to shit on the software and not provide a solution myself. By trade, I'm a software engineer and I design GUIs myself. So how would I approach this as a software engineer? First of all, Pioneer needs to realize that users use the software because they are forced to because they are market leader, not because they want to use the software. Because you will design software differently when you're putting the user first. So don't put stuff behind the paywall that makes the software easier to use. Only put the stuff behind the paywall that adds something to that basic version. Hit a cold hard reset. Throw everything related to the GUI overboard and start from scratch. First design then program, because that's clearly not the case now. The performance mode, the lightning mode and the edit mode are a afterthought. And that's probably why there are so many conflicting shortcuts, for example, between the one player in the performance mode and in the export mode. Then number four, make a list of all the features you need in the software and prioritize them based on how much they are used. For example, the Q and the play button are used most, so they should be bigger. And number five, think about the workflow of a DJ. Make a workflow chart and then design your layout around that. Subscribe to my free DJ tips newsletter. As a thank you, I will throw in a free ebook with information on how to get a foot in the door, equipment and the necessary skills to learn. The link is in the description.